Welcome everyone, this is Easty and the wolf is just down there. I just wanted to do a little video, I just got a little, it's a gadget, it's a cheap gadget, but uh, I wanted to talk about VR a little bit. I've been a massive VR fan since like 20 years ago. I went to Ells Court and I got one of those VFX massive headsets with a contraption device you would sit in and it was intense, it was probably like 240p resolution. This came out like four or five years ago from Sony. And it wasn't really slanted as a games or VR device, it was more of a, of a 3D movie viewer. And it, it's probably the best 3D you could get at the time. I think it's all 2.5 uh, 3D what came out then, because you've got a fixed position that the director shoots a certain angle, you know, and you, you're completely locked. Whereas in a true 3D environment, you can move around yourself on different axes, and the computer will generate that. So there's, there's a very different... Uh, market there between movies that are directed and computer rendered 3D where you can really move where you want and that's really true 3D. Now when I got this four years ago it's basically just the front of this here because this device was extremely uncomfortable and a lot of VR have had this problem like if you want to like if you're playing a game or some simulator you want to wear it for two hours really at least and uh, so I messed around and I bought a cheap bicycle headset and I, I can link you back to a video when I originally did that. It's very cowboyish, really tacky, but I created it so the center point of balance is right in the middle and there's a lot of area over the top. And it's cool, I mean, it's, and this was great for me, actually, uh, there you go. Just fits perfect, it's comfortable. A little thing on the back if you feel like. And I counterweighted it with some coins, I think. Now that was my first VR device, really, and I stuck the track IR on the side of here. And, uh, that gave me full uh, six axis movement. But if I moved a little bit too far, because the track IR is meant to like looking at the screen and it enhances the movement. So if you move you know, 10 degrees, it moves like 50 degrees. So you're always looking at the screen. And if you move more than, because it's a line of sight to the camera, if you move more than say 80, 70, 80 degrees, it loses uh, its tracking ability. And the problem with, because I'm wearing the screens, I can look around 180 degrees. And uh, so you would hit the limitations of the track IR. But still, it worked fantastic for, you know, for four or five years ago. That was really my first VR solution. And it did take a bit of tinkering with. But I could wear this for, you know, for a few hours. And the screens inside this were fantastic. They were 7, 720p uh, each. So there's two screens there, OLED. I think they are 0.7 inch size diameter and that's 720p everything if you look that up the dot pitch on that is absolutely phenomenal so they were great screens at the time but this device was quite uh, expensive uh, then obviously the big known vr breakthrough the household name is the oculus and oculus basically just they applied the current technology that was out uh, they used the cheap, cheapest mass market screens, so it was affordable, and the design was quite quite cool. Uh, basically, all Oculus does is, if I reach for my phone, so you have a regular mass market screen, and you have your lens, and they, they provided two different lenses. Oh, the wolf's here. They provided two different lenses for different eye uh, envelopes, I guess, different tolerances there, and they fixed it inside of this. You've just got your screen like this and you've got your two lenses and then the screen is split as you can see here this is Google Cardboard that's not now the screen is split so one's left eye one's right eye so that's a true 3D it's not like the polarized glasses or any of the older technologies that are really tricking your brain this is true 3D that if you watch a movie on or if you have a 3D environment it looks a lot better and uh, you can set the distance this is from your eye a little bit inside it's got a kind of a ratchet mechanism and that's the only movability you had. So hopefully in between the two lenses and the, that adjustability, you were comfortable. And again, this is like ski goggle kind of design. So once you put that on, you always see people pulling it over like this. It's kind of sweaty when you're wearing it. Over. It does get kind of warm with the clothes there, uh, unlike the, the Sony. And the biggest problem I've had with this is DK2 is the drivers. Like to get some games running is very very difficult takes a long time a lot of like the sony would kind of work with the nvidia 3d drivers so pretty much any game would work but it didn't have the surround the fov is a lot more narrow so I, it's a balance you know it, it was very good for some things 
but it was like you're looking at a screen in front of you with a big board around it where this is a lot more immersive so it's definitely a ballast definitely pluses to the Sony came out a long time ago but obviously this is a development kit and we're, within the next six months we're gonna like break into the big wave of VR now the reason I did this video is I just received this wearability gadget and uh, this is like kind of a Google Cardboard you know really really cheap entry into VR you've already got a phone you can use this very mobile so I'm gonna have a quick look at this see what it's like okay guys what are you thinking <laughs> it's a good logo uh, okay what what this is is a this is a very cheap uh, VR solution using your phone that you already have and just like a Google Cardboard is, uh, unlike the Samsung thing, which is rather expensive, but I think the Samsung thing is much, uh, uh, it's aimed at a kind of a different market. It's like the top end of the mobile solution rather than the uh, what this is end, end of. So th I backed this in a, in a Kickstarter to try and get these guys to make this thing because I thought it looked pretty cool. For So basically what it is, it's, uh, it, it's your optics with a, a nice little holder and you, your phone can fit inside this and uh, like so I believe uh, it looks like the right way and then it, and it has these optics and it's obviously all quite cheap and I, I don't know what the, they're going to sell this for but the good thing is with this you can close it up and just stick it in your bag or whatever and now even before the VR solutions you know what which are going to be I don't know four or five hundred you know, up to a thousand dollars, I would expect, uh, are coming out at the end of the year. We're already getting a, a massive amount of uh, cheap, like Google card, Google with the cardboard, kind of set off this wave as they tend to do. With they, you know, they set a, they set an idea out there, and then they 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 leave everyone going at it and kind of pioneer the a, a new market. And they've done that with this. And uh, these guys have came along and designed this product. And uh, I don't know what else you get in this. So. What I think this will do for VR is it'll bring a lot of people into, you know, just getting one of these because it's fun and then trying out stuff. And it brings them in like mobile gaming, I think, bring brought a lot of people into gaming and it brought a lot of people into, you know, web based applications for, you know, apps and just basically flooded the market full of all different kind of things you can do with apps and just brought people, you know, people who wouldn't have a computer, they wouldn't have a laptop or a tablet even. They had a phone and they got a smartphone because that's all you could really get now. And then they started using apps and it just brought them onto this, you know, this height, this latest technology curve. And I think this kind of thing will do this for VR. It will just open people's eyes, mind the pun, to exactly what, uh, you know, VR is and, and kind of things you can use it for. And because the, the new market's there, people will create new stuff that we may not, may not have got if it was just for the more high-end VR, you know, games, applications, simulators. And uh, so anyway, I backed this, just received it. And the way I see this is I'm actually, I'm actually playing a lot now with, with uh, developing 3D graphics for VR. And I've been doing some videos and playing with the, the YouTube, YouTube uh, 360 now it, it's kind of very different as I talked about before video is a, a fixed point of view so it's like you have a camera and even if you render that, render that in 360 degrees it's still like a 2D picture just wrapped around the sphere and you're inside the sphere so you can look around the sphere but you're still limited to actually moving so the, the person creating the film will, can move that sphere around and you just, you're along for a ride and you can look around so it gives you a lot more immersion now the next step to that is having, that's on say YouTube 360, it's not 3D. So it's a single camera and it's wrapped around a sphere and you're inside of it. So you look around and it's still very immersive. But so the next step is to have that 3D. Now that's very difficult to do with cameras because the cameras being side by side, it's hard to, to capture a free, you know, a 360 degree uh, image because you'll see the other camera. So it's a lot easier to do that with 3D, tech, 3D graphics because you uh, you can hide the cameras from each other but you can also use like you can make the file size a little bit smaller on your images or your video and you can use some algorithms and it'll offset 
for, for the eye offset and it'll kind of fake that. So that'll give you stereo vision as well, which gives you a lot more immersion. Then, but this is all still, in my mind, it's still all still two and a half D because you're locked on this path of the director, you know, wherever they take you. Because it's just a pre-recorded video and you're just inside this sphere and the, the data will be the same regardless what you do. You know, you can move around, but you're just seeing different angles of that sphere. It's like zooming in on a picture and moving around the picture. You know, you don't change anything. Now, the actual true 3D is where it's rendered real time. So that, that's a big thing with games, obviously. And it may be a big thing with, uh, you know, media, architecture. You know, it, I, I'm an aircraft designer, so I can see that uh, you know, in the distant future because it's this very slow uh, evolving industry. Uh, and, and they have been looking at it for 20 years. You know, I know that they have been creating these caves of 3D and they've been trying to introduce the digital mockups into these kind of environments, but it's a very slow adopting industry. And, but so, you, so yeah, I think there are different stages. And the first stage we have for these kind of things is YouTube 360. YouTube uh, or Google have really got ahead of the game and they've put that out there and you can create your own free, uh, 360 degree videos now. And there's, there's also cameras coming up, so that's really simple. You don't need to be using any converters or any wizardry. You can just buy the camera, stick it on your handlebars of your bike or on your ski helmet or on your, on your, your uh, weight board. And then when people are viewing it, they can look around themselves. They can look at what's interesting to them. So it gives people a bit more uh, freedom when they're viewing your videos. The problem I see with those kind of devices is because you're wrapping the whole image around a 360 degree sphere, and you're only looking at one part of it, the, the sensors are the same size at the moment for the cameras. So the, the resolution that you normally get on your, what, on your viewpoint is basically now spread around the 360 degree sphere and you're only looking at a part of it. So you're getting a massive resolution reduction. And if you look at a lot of the videos like that, you'll see that. And when people are rendering videos, uh, in 3D, they're starting to do it 4K because of that. So the little bit you're looking at is still kind of a 1080p or a little bit less. and But the whole sphere is a 4K video. Anyway, let's open this and see what's inside of it. I kind of waffle a lot, obviously. I'm really interested in the subject, as you can tell. So I wasn't too sure what came with this. I just backed it. It was quite cheap, and I really wanted these guys because I thought it was kind of a cool device in this market. So we've got some little bump here. We got a, a barcode, probably I think it takes you to Google Cardboard. When Google came out with their little cardboard uh, container for your phone with, a, with the optics in, they created also the software, which they're very good at. And a hat. I think with this device, when I've seen people, they actually hold it. They'll hold it to their face. So you stick your phone in like this, then you hold it to your face and you, it'll use the sensor in your phone, which is obviously not as good as say Oculus because uh, that uses the visual sensor and the, the, the matrix of sensors on the front of the thing as well as uh, like gyroscopic sensors. This is just using like your accelerometer sensors in your phone. So as you move around, it's still quite good and you hold this to your face, but I find like with the focus, it's difficult to hold it because it wants to be a little bit away from your face. Well, for my focus anyway, I'm sure it's different for everybody with these optics. And so it looks like they give you this hat and it's got a real sturdy, uh, cap on it and you can just slide this on here there you go so when you put that on your head you can just set this up and if you go inside you want to watch your YouTube videos or whatever you can it's pretty easy I'm sure you can see that what I'm gonna do like this with the card I've actually got a cardboard like a clone one I bought and when it's inside there the way uh, the the cardboard control system works is it has a little magnet on the side and it's not connected. At first I thought it was connected with like an FC or something, but it's not. All it is, is it actually flips back and the inertia from that, your phone can recognize and it's like you're clicking a button. So there's no actual connection, it's just the movement. So when you click the magnet, the inertia does this. So when you're, I don't have that button on here obviously, but you can reach through and just tap your screen. And that's all you need to do in these interfaces is just tap the screen. And with the Google Cardboard interface, if you want to go home and YouTube as well, you just rotate like this. So if you if you're wearing it, you're a bit of an idiot. You just or you look a bit of an idiot anyway with that. But yeah, you just rotate and it'll go back home. Anyway, quick look in here. I'll actually uh, zoom in on here so when my phone's on, you can try and see see what it looks like. And uh, 
and through there. It, it is quite good definition. This is like some bump for uh, for being a, a backer. I didn't really realize they did all this. For me, these companies don't need to do this kind of stuff. I mean, it's nice, it's great. I, I'm sure this just took a lot of time, but I'd rather them just provide this in a white box. I mean, all this stuff's great and it makes you feel a bit special that you did do it. But, uh, you know, and it's cool. But I'd rather it just be a white box as easy as possible and let them just focus on the product. But if the product looks good quality, looks like they've thought about it a lot. These are just like blinkers to keep, because when it's on, you do get light from the top and the sides. And that's kind of distracting, but with the cap on, it creates a, a good box. So you've only really got the bottom, but it's quite good. To, and that's a dark area anyway, because you've got the cap over the top. And you can just reach in and tap, which is brilliant. So we've got a t-shirt too. Uh, the place I, I love this because I can like do my test on my YouTube video. And without like setting my Oculus up, it's quite difficult. I have to have some applications and then I have to, the, the drivers for the Oculus are a nightmare, so it takes over my screens and just to see if it even looks any good. So now I can just load it, upload my stuff to YouTube, stick this on, I can render it, upload it, stick this on and have a quick look around. And I've done it with a cardboard before and it's really cool. And you really get a good idea of the quality of stuff. But I can see it as like, obviously people all have games but they have to be very simple because of the control interface. Unless you're going to have a, a Bluetooth controller or something like that, I'm sure that's possible. And I mean, it's a real cheap solution. You've already got your phone, so you pay 30 or 40 bucks for something like this and stick it on your hat and you're on the plane or something. You know, you can have a controller and away you go, you've got your own little, uh, you know, 3D or two and a half D gaming solution, which is really pretty cool and I've tried a few of the cardboards out and this is definitely better than those the optics are, are really really good and the the size it I mean the cardboards do close down pretty small obviously but that's pretty cool it's pretty rugged this is for a uh, different size phone so you can see this is a Sony Z1 so I don't know the exact di dimensions it's a five inch screen so it's five inch diagonal and then if you uh, have a bigger phone so like the six inch phones, I think this is what this is for. So you can see uh, it'll stretch a little bit, but this the default on there definitely fits mine. But yeah, you can imagine also if you're traveling and there's like 3D photos, you're just uh, going through YouTube and browsing videos, you know, and in the future, I'm sure you're gonna be on like real estate and you're gonna be able to have a tour around the house and look where you want to look you're not you're not you know you're not looking at photos of like a wall and you're like hey wait a minute what's that big crack there you know uh looking down at places you think there may be floods or up at the plumbing you know that's gonna it's gotta be the future it's gotta be so easy for a for a real estate agent to walk around with a 3d camera upload it you know, and just walk around every room slowly and you can pause. The good thing with the videos is you can pause and then still look around. So you could just have someone walk around, you know, uh, touring a hotel maybe, have them walk around a hotel, check out a few rooms, and you can have a look around in 3D. I'm sure they already do that. Now these, these devices, it's such a, an easy way into this market. And I think it's gonna get people really inspired about VR. And the end of this year when the, the big, you know, hard hitting Devices come out, the Vive and the, the, the Valve Vive, HTC, the Oculus, and there's a, the Sony Morpheus is more obviously dedicated gaming. But there's going to be a bundle more, I'm sure, pushing the technology. It's really good. And these kind of things are really going to be a good way to get people who are not into any of that into the market and to see what it's all about and maybe inspire them uh, to be a fan and to, to get into the computer gaming side of it or the application side of it. Anyway, I thought I'd do a quick video because I'm pretty mad about uh, VR stuff and I never really talked about it over the years. So it's pretty good just to talk about all the technology as it is at the moment. And I hope people find this interesting. And this is just one device of many and it's a good example because I got it. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.